What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. So we're talking about a few different horror topics in this video here today. We'll be talking about Scream 7. We'll be talking about The Nun 2. We'll be talking about 13 Ghosts to Show. And we'll be talking about a small tidbit of information regarding Nightmare on Elm Street. So starting off here with Scream 7. Scream 7's filming location we know is indeed up in the air. As are most of the aspects of this movie in all honesty. There's still a chance that this movie could get cancelled. Due to the strikes that are basically going on for the indefinite future at this point. I think things are at a stand still between the WGA, SGA, and the AMPTP, and I think they will stay there for the indefinite future. That's just the way it currently looks. It's unfortunate, but that seems to be our grim reality. However, the last thing that we thought we knew to be true about this project was that it would be shooting in Montreal again, just like Scream 6 shot in Montreal, which does, of course, led us to the assumption that we would be back in New York. I addressed that in another video, that this is unlikely, and how someone I trust basically laughed at me when I showed them that news from Production Weekly. And then sure enough, Production Weekly, of course, ended up updating that and removing it. Blackbird got its own separate section. Now, someone else I trust seems to have it on good authority that Montreal is indeed off the table completely. So now I firmly believe we'll be somewhere else until proven otherwise. With one of my sources laughing at me and then someone else I trust just completely shutting it down as they have it on good authority that it is not going to be the case. I don't think we're going to be back in Montreal. I will not believe it anymore until we have been proven otherwise. I did want to discuss this amazing potential possibility mentioned by you, Horror Paradise. So shout out to you. Blackbird, which could still be the working title of Screen 7, might be telling us the location if you believe this theory from Horror Paradise. Blackbirds, well, some of this isn't even a theory, it's a fact. Blackbirds are popular in Seattle, Washington, which is where Sydney has been described as living in the scripts for Screen 5 and 6. Blackbird Seattle is also the name of a dessert place in Seattle, Washington. So if Blackbird is in some way still relevant to Scream 7, this will be a reasonable way to decipher that we are indeed going to be in Seattle, Washington for Scream 7. It would also line up with some of the, some of the stuff I've heard about this film, but we'll just have to wait and see what all comes out and what actually comes to fruition with Scream 7 if these strikes are able to be resolved. But I just want to really talk about that tidbit on blackbirds and their significance in washington and that theory that you had horror paradise because that does kind of get my mind going as to maybe that is a sign if blackbird is still again related to scream 7 that we could be going to seattle washington but diving into the nun 2 the nun 2 was screened during fan expo canada on saturday and a friend of mine attended this screening they enjoyed it they called it better than part one but it wasn't great by any means is what I took away from our conversation. Also, they did confirm pretty much all the stuff I heard from the test screenings. So I'll still be going into this with very low expectations. It would appear, though, that my concerns about Valak's motivations in this movie are thankfully obsolete now because the film seems to have something logical to deliver, unlike what I heard coming out of the original test screenings in regards to how Valak's motivations were basically non-existent. Uh, they did specify that they enjoyed the jump scares, but again, they didn't have many positives beyond just thinking that it was better than the nun. I mean, being better than the nun by a hair to me still does not equate to a good movie or even that for that matter, a great movie. It might just be something decent because, again, I don't think that the nun, the, that original movie is like the worst thing ever, but it is just not a very good movie horror film if i'm being quite honest it feels like a game of peekaboo for a good chunk of the movie and i think the nun 2 is going to fall into that same trap honestly i'll be reviewing the film on my channel when i can warner brothers has been a little different lately with these early screening invites but we'll see how that goes most importantly though i did want to talk about this the surprise at the end of the nun 2 still remains intact according to my friends so for all of you who want something to be excited for at the end of the nun 2 please stick around it's not like a post credit scene or anything but it happens prior to the credits uh now here's the thing i was going to also mention there is this TV spot going around called Relic. I'll leave a link to it that Warner Brothers released. And it's flat out confirming a plot point from the film itself. It's titled Relic. In the TV spot, Irene is going on about how she knows what Valak is after. And going off of the fact that the TV spot is titled Relic, listening to the dialogue, it would seem Valak is after a relic. And just so you know, 
Valak is after a relic in this movie. <laughs> These TV spots, they're very telling. They're kind of giving away details I already knew about in their spots now with a, with a title like that, Relic, and then having Irene talk about it in the TV spot. But what that relic is and why Valak wants it, you'll find out when the movie comes out. So diving into 13 Ghosts, 13 Ghosts, the show got an excellent update from Bloody Disgusting a few days ago. Bloody Disgusting has been told that the fan favorite character known as the Jackal would be a major player in the series. And the plan is to also delve into the creation of the machine that was built to contain the various ghosts known as the Basilius machine, as well as the ancient book that served at the film's Nec Necromicon, the, Ar the Arcanum. Mac Patrick Mediate, who I've talked about being involved with pitching this series to Dark Castle and Sony Pictures, said this is bloody disgusting. We do envision an entire universe for 13 Ghosts of Series franchise that lives on eternally after the first season and does go on to explore different planes of mortal and post-mortal realities. It's actually going to be something pretty profound that could be an enormous testament to the worlds we laid the groundwork for with the first season. Long and short, this is absolutely going to be a series with stories and three-dimensional characters that fans are going to want to join up with for multiple seasons. So they have plans to actually kickstart a whole entire series from this initial season, inaugural season, if you will. They don't want to just be a mini series. They kind of want this to be the foundation of what could be maybe one of the most successful horror shows in recent memory, if everything is able to come to fruition. Uh, Sony Pictures is still the person that has to, the entity that has to sign off on this because 50% of the rights holders are already on board. Dark Castle, now we just need Sony Pictures. But of course, the strikes and everything has things paused. Now, the last thing I was going to touch on here was regarding Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, I believe his name is pronounced Sung Kong, who plays Han in the Fast and Furious franchise. Recently, when speaking the comic book, he let it be known that he apparently wants to play Freddy Krueger. He said, I'd love to play Freddy in a Nightmare on Elm Street. That character was just so fun. Having experience with prosthetic makeup and sitting in the chair for four hours like I did in the Obi-Wan series in Star Wars, that's the only part that I kind of wonder if I have the stamina to sit in the makeup chair for months. But that character was so fun. That sweater to this day is so iconic and the knife fingers, that'd be on the bucket list for sure. Now, here's my comment on that. I personally cannot see anybody else doing this right now besides Dave McRae. And that's that's solely because of what we've seen come out of that project Dave has participated in and the passion behind it and the attention to detail and the way he seems to be paying respects to Robert while also still doing his own thing. I can't see anyone right now in the role besides Dave McRae. Obviously, Dave has actually alluded to this himself on his channel. Maybe they should kind of focus on not trying to bring in any big names, but find somebody who is relatively not known the way Robert England wasn't known prior to his casting of Freddy Krueger in the original movie. He's probably right about that. Find somebody and give them a breakout role by highlighting their talent in their revival of one of the most iconic horror villains that we've ever seen in the last 40 years let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notifications so you never miss a video in the description i'll have links on my social media accounts i'm on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course if there's any movies news or reviews i'm going to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video